Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today I want to review some of the Comic Link auctions that just recently ended for 9.8 Comics. And uh, some really interesting prices to talk about as well, so uh, this one uh, should be a fun video for sure. Okay, first one up, it's an Ultimate Fallout 4 in the Variant Edition. Yeah, the uh, more rare, Jurjevic variant of Ultimate Fallout 4. Seeing this one sell in a 9.8 for $30,001. So uh, $30,000, we'll call it all US dollars, all the prices we'll talk about. So uh, for this one, just to give you an idea of where this one's come, it's really one of the most expensive and most popular modern comic books to uh, think about in the 9.8 for sure. Uh, so three, four years ago, I was getting back into the hobby. This one was right around $2,000. Still at that point, one of the more expensive modern ones in the 9.8 for sure. You know, you could see there would be some potential there, I think, with the first appearance of Miles Morales. Uh, then the, the coronavirus hit, and at, kind of at the same time, there was some, uh, like, Miles Mania, I guess it was. And uh, this one kind of took off and was sort of selling for quite a bit there from, like, 6000 to 10000 I would say. Uh, then about a year ago, it really took another leg up. Um, I think most of them were selling from about 15000 you know, into that low 20000 range. And then right now, $30,000 for one in a 9.8. Uh, this coming off of, you know, about a week ago, there was that Spider-Verse 2 trailer that dropped. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where this one goes from here. A lot of times I'm not really one to recommend, like, oh, a trailer just dropped, so now you got to go out and buy all the key issues. Like, that's not the right environment for me to, uh, you know, try to purchase one of these 9.8s. So, 30000 bucks for the variant of Ultimate Fallout 4. Yeah, going to be interesting to see where that one uh, heads uh, moving forward here. Uh, also saw an Ultimate Fallout 4 in the first print cell. One I do have, this one had sold for $2,855. Ultimate Fallout 4 first print. Uh, both of these had ended last night too, so these are, you know, very recent sales. Because, uh, you know, mentioned that uh, Spider-Verse trailer dropped. Like a day or two later, I saw one on eBay sell for 3200 and something. I forget the exact number, but... Uh, clearly, you know, you wait a few more days, maybe get it for 2855 Yeah, usually when you see those trailers, you just don't want to go out, like, the next day or two and think about buying all these key issues. Probably going to be best to, to be pretty patient on uh, some of these Miles Morales keys right now. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, though. You never know, because, um, you know, certainly that trailer just dropped and there could be more, you know, Miles Morales, Spider-Verse hype moving forward here. So it's going to be, uh... Yeah, fun to uh, keep an eye on the Ultimate Fallout 4s moving forward here. All right, one I do have, next one, an Uncanny X-Men 121. First full appearance of Alpha Flight in this batch of auctions sold for 1800 I think that's actually a pretty great deal. Pretty sure uh, we documented one of these that had went over 2000 I think it was like 2200 or something like that. So I think that's a good range on this book, 2200 maybe near the top, 1800 I think it's actually a pretty awesome deal for this one. So I think uh, if you're a big Alpha Flight fan, this is one to target, and 1,800 in the 9.8 white pages is a you know price target to aim for, I think. Uh, next one was a cool one to see. You don't see the newsstand of this one very often. Uncanny X-Men 244, newsstand edition. This is a first appearance of Jubilee. Saw this one sell for $801. Yeah, not too bad. This is one you don't see very often. And uh, I'm actually not even too sure of like some prior price history for this one because I just don't re really remember a newsstand going of a Uncanny X-Men 244. But uh, cool to see one sell for $801. Uh, next one here is a book I'm kind of on the record as, as wanting. It's an Amazing Spider-Man number 210, first appearance of Madam Web. And there were some rumors, like I think it was an actual MCU announcement that they're going to be coming out with possibly a Madam Web Disney Plus series, I believe it was. I don't know if that's been axed, but uh, this one could be in a bit of a lull where it's a good time to buy now and then the series comes out and surprises everyone. Uh, sort of similar to kind of how the She-Hulk has, you know, done uh, recently where, you know, probably about three to six months ago it was a decent time to buy uh, Savage She-Hulk number one. But now, like, they're kind of teasing that Disney Plus show, so that book's really heated up a lot. Uh, maybe Amazing Spider-Man 210 has that potential to uh, heat up moving forward here. Okay, next one, I do have, luckily, an Amazing Spider-Man 238, first appearance of Hobgoblin, one of the best covers in the 80s, I think, as well. Uh, in a direct edition, too, looking really similar to mine. Mine's got a nice centering, too. Yeah, I do have, a, luckily, a, a real nice copy of uh, 238. 
sold for $2,800. Not too bad. I'm pretty sure one of these had went right around that sort of $2,000 level. I think maybe even a little bit less in a direct edition. Um, $2,800 though for a really nice centered one. And this one was looking pretty awesome. You know, a, a nice centering to it where you, you see the whole cover. It's not like miswrapped toward the back of the cover, which is kind of my annoyance on this issue. Uh, $2,800 I think is pretty fair. Um, this one's cooling down a little bit though. Maybe you can aim a little bit closer to $2,000 um, if you're in the market for a, an Amazing Spider-Man 238. Such a kind of a solid no-brainer one, especially if you're like a villains guy like me. <laughs> uh, two thirty-eight. Hopefully, you get it closer to two thousand dollars in a nine point eight direct edition. The next one, an Amazing Spider-Man three hundred in a newsstand edition. Yeah, I was really uh, interested to see how this one would end. It ended up going for seventeen thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, so interesting. Uh, we documented one probably about a month or two ago. It was like right when the Venom two movie was about to come out, kind of deal. Uh, one sold for $20,138, uh, sort of right around that Venom movie. Uh, all the Symbiote books are really cooling off. We'll get into a few more here, but was $20,000, now it's $17,250. There's probably still a little bit of room for the Symbiote books to cool off even a little bit more. So if you're in the market for this one, you could maybe even think about uh, getting a little bit closer to $15,000 for an Amazing Spider-Man 300 9.8 in the newsstand. Uh, direct version of Amazing Spider-Man 300 sold in a 9.8 in this uh, group of auctions as well for $4,700. So right during that Venom 2 movie and even a little bit before that when the trailer dropped and stuff like that, uh, this one was going for right around 6,000 bucks. Some had went for like 6,400, 5,900, 6,100 kind of thing. Uh, we're about a month or two after that Venom 2 movie. A lot of people didn't really like it. This one's cooling down a little bit, 4,700. That being said, it's pretty much the toughest 9.8 in the 1980s to get with the huge first appearance of, uh, of Venom. I think you want to think, you want to keep your eye on this one and think about possibly grabbing one if you're in the market for a one in the 9.8. The Symbia books, as I said, have, probably have a little bit more to cool down but closer to $4,000 on Amazing Spider-Man 300 and a 9.8, I think is a, a phenomenal deal, pretty much. All right, next one. Uh, a good example of how the Symbiote books are cooling down. Amazing Spider-Man 361 in a newsstand, selling for $750. Yeah, so the more rare version of Amazing Spider-Man 361 for $750. Bucks. This one, um, I think even kind of peak hype, uh, you know, the Let There Be Carnage trailer dropped kind of thing. This one might have been like about 2000 bucks at that point for, you know, maybe a month. And then things started to cool off. Uh, now it's really cooled off. Clearly, Venom 2 was not very well accepted by most people. And I kind of agree with that. It wasn't that good for sure. <laughs> and I'm kind of being um, uh, delicate. I would say I'm being nice there. Uh, but uh, Mini Spider-Man 361 newsstand selling for 750 you know, I, I had purchased mine. I, I got this one in a 9.8 and it was, you know, way before coronavirus and all the hype for the movies and stuff like that. And it was like 410 bucks. So, you know, this one went all the way up to 2000. I, yeah, $750, maybe a little bit closer to 700 under 700, I think is an absolute target to aim for if you want this one. And I think under 700 is, is a really good value for a first full appearance of carnage in the more rare new stand edition. All right, next one. I was interested to see this one, uh, what it would sell for. I do have this one in a 9.8. Big fan of uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, number one in a CGC 9.8, selling for $1,669. This was, a, was in an old case. Uh, so I think, yeah, the kind of range on this one, this is probably lower end of the range they've been going at lately. Uh, $1,669, all the way up to about $2,000, I think, in a 9.8. Uh, this one, Batman Dark Knight Returns, number one. A really simple cover, so... If there's some uh, sort of inner well scuffing on the CGC case, that can affect the value of these. So if you see like a Primo one looking amazing, no inner well scuffing, um, I think it would go closer to 2000. This one in an old case, there was a scuff or two, but it was actually pretty, pretty f fantastic. I think 1669 is a price target to aim for on a Dark Knight Returns number one in the 9.8. Yeah, that's pretty much the biggest Batman key in the 80s. Pretty tough one in the 9.8 as well. Next one uh, surprised me. Batman Beyond number one in a CGC 9.8 selling for $2,150. Yeah, this is uh, one I really love as a big Batman fan and a Batman Beyond fan. I got two of them in a 9.8. Um, 
we documented one that sold for one thousand seven ninety nine. I think it was like a you know a couple weeks ago. So I think th that's the kind of range on it, one thousand seven hundred to two thousand one hundred fifty. I would think this is a little bit more expensive than you'd probably want to pay right now in, in the current environment. Uh, but it is a really tough one. It's yeah, it's just a great nine point eight. So um, if you're the biggest Batman Beyond fan, try to get under two thousand for this one. But it is just absolutely one to want for sure. So uh, cool to see one sell for. 2150 all right uh speaking of those big variants edge of spider verse number two the variant edition the, the greg land variant the more rare variant for uh, first appearance of spider gwen this one selling in an auction for seven thousand two hundred and fifty seven dollars uh yeah this is one admittedly i haven't followed too closely to be honest i'm not too sure on the price history yeah, some of these variants, uh, they're just out of my budget, so I don't follow them, you know, really specifically because I'm just not, you know, really interested in buying them just because they are out of my budget. But uh, cool to see one go, 7257 I think that's heating up a little bit from, you know, a month or two ago. These were pretty phenomenal buys. I did make a video about a few weeks ago there just recognizing that you probably want to get Edge of Spider-Verse number two before the, the uh, Spider-Verse trailer drops, and that just happened in the last week, so... Unfortunately, now, probably not the best time to think about purchasing Ultimate Apollo 4 or Edge of Spider-Verse number 2, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that variant goes, selling for uh, 7257 just in the last few days here. Next one's a, a fantastic investment-grade comic book, I think. One I, I really want. It's a Giant Size Chillers number 1, first appearance of Lilith, who's the daughter of Dracula. Awesome cover on this one, too. Uh, this is one where I was getting back into the hobby. I, I, I don't know, I like sort of vampires and, and uh, even uh, Tomb of Dracula number one, which is first appearance of Dracula in Marvel Comics. I've really had my eye on that through on and off throughout the years. This is another one I really have loved. Uh, so in the 9.8, sold for $3,800. Yeah, Giant Size Chillers number one, first appearance of Lilith. Um, yeah, when I was getting back into the hobby, this one was kind of 800 to 900 three, four years ago. And there was one, I'm pretty sure I almost purchased it. It's just a tough one in the 9.8, a 70s book, so it's an old one, a, t a really tough one. I can understand the kind of $3,800 price. Uh, yeah, just a, a fantastic one if, if you love vampires, pretty much like me. Uh, okay, next one, uh, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number one. Uh, awesome here. This one's kind of hitting a price target that I had mentioned in prior videos of, you know, you probably want to buy it at this target. Uh, sold for $1,238. Uh, this one really pulled back and a few we documented here in the last month that it went for kind of $1,300, $1,400. And I said, you know, this, this one could cool off a little bit more under $1,250. I think it's a pretty fantastic buy. $1,238 someone got it for. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, um, closer to 1,000 on a G.I. Joe, Real American Hero. If you're a big G.I. Joe fan, that's kind of the one to get. That's, that's making a lot of sense. And yeah, I mentioned in prior videos during the coronavirus thing, this one really heated up and that Snake Eyes movie was being anticipated at the time. There were some that went for like 3,000, 4,000 in the 9.8 and it just, just kind of boggled my mind at the time. But now huge pullback, closer to 1,000 bucks. Great value, I think, on a G.I. Joe number one in a 9.8. Uh, Invincible Iron Man number nine, the variant edition for this one. Yeah, first uh, full appearance of Riri Williams and uh, this variant. That's got a really nice eye appeal. I, I really like this one. I haven't really followed it very often because it's not one I would ever buy, to be honest. Um, you know, maybe if, if there were no Riri Williams kind of rumors, but now, you know, she's confirmed in all these movies and it's just super expensive. <laughs> Selling for $4,877. Invincible Iron Man number nine variant. And this is going to be a, a fun one to watch because, yeah, it's super expensive right now. But, you know, if Riri just comes out in these MCU movies for the next 10 years, let's say, um, there could be still more upside for this one. Yeah, it could be a bit of, you know, maybe like an Ultimate Fallout 4 variant where it just kind of defies the odds and it's just so wanted. And because it's the more rare version of a big first appearance, you know, this one still might trend upward. Uh, so, yeah, again, it'll be... Fun to see what happens uh, price-wise with that. But uh, yeah, uh, Invincible Iron Man 9 variant, 4877 just selling in the last few days. Next one's a, a tremendous value, I think, uh, especially when you kind of look at that, you know, that brand new variant going for 4877 It's a Marvel preview number four. 
in a 9.8 white pages as well. White pages on this one. A lot of times you see this off-white to white. Uh, first appearance of Star-Lord from 1976, going for $2,250. Yeah, I think that's pretty much a phenomenal purchase. Uh, just a, a lot of bang for your buck, I think. Clearly an expensive book, but uh, for Star-Lord, a tough one to find. An old one in, in a perfect grade. It was looking nicely centered too. I think 2250 is just a phenomenal buy, especially when you kind of compare them to some of these like modern variants that are going for two times as much money. Like personally, I'd probably rather have the uh, Marvel preview number four for 2,250 than an Invincible Iron Man number nine variant for 4,877. But who knows? Yeah, with Riri, there's a, you know, a lot of potential with that other book, so. But uh, for Marvel preview number four, 9.8 white pages, 2,250, I think is, is an absolute price target to aim for, yeah, if you, if you want that one. Uh, and NYX number three, the next one here. Yeah, first appearance of X-23, the uh, clone of Wolverine, uh, Laura Kinney, for selling here for $1,708. And uh, yeah, I uh, saw a few on eBay just a few days ago that had sold right around this level. I think it was like one, th one went for 1,700 and something, one was 1,800 and something. So I think that's right around the first, pr uh, the fair price if you're looking for an NYX number three and a 9.8 white pages, $1,708. Okay, next one. I do have, Ooh, I don't want this to fall. A Star Wars number one in a 9.8. Yeah, pretty cool to see this one hanging in there, you know, really good. And I thought it would, you know, there's a lot of Star Wars books that really heat up and then cool down, but you almost can't go wrong on a Star Wars number one, absolutely. And a 9.8 selling for $5,100. So during like peak COVID Mandalorian hype, which was about a year ago maybe, this one was like 6,000, 7,000. I think one even went around 8,000. Like it was looking like it might march up there <laughs> toward a $10,000. Now it's at 5,100. You know, it's a big one. It's, uh, you know, one I do recommend. Uh, one that's trended up really nicely. I purchased mine about three years ago for 920 something, I remember it was. So now it's 5,100. So it's just, you know, it, it's one that's been trending up nice. And if you're a big Star Wars fan, you kind of just, you know, I think you want, you do want to go for the Star Wars number one. Uh, especially now since like books like Star Wars 42 are, seem to be really hot. But actually, um, Next one here is a Star Wars 42 in a direct edition, 9.8, selling for $2,800. That's really cooled down, yeah, from uh, basically like when, you know, because, you know, Mandalorian going on, I think people were kind of, you know, they knew the foreshadowing because like Boba Fett's mask almost looks like a Mandalorian mask. Um, so people were buying this one for that. And then Book of Boba Fett kind of came out and it really exploded. I think this one was like over 4,000 in the direct and then the newsstands were over 5,000. So 2,800 Book of Boba Fett, some of the trailers are dropping right now. Um, you might want to be a little more patient on this one. It is a great, you know, key issue, Star Wars key issue. It's kind of one, two, like Star Wars number one. And then the second best Star Wars issue is probably a key issue is Star Wars 42. Uh, 2,800, maybe you can uh, be patient here and aim a little closer to 2,500 in a direct edition for Star Wars 42. It's, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Like, who knows, maybe... It really takes off again if Book of Boba Fett's amazing. So, you know, I'm I just not really sure uh, what, what will happen with uh, Star Wars 42. Next one is uh, Sandman number one, selling for $1,111. Uh, this one ticking over a thousand bucks. There were some teasers uh, a couple months ago of a Netflix Sandman show that kind of looked pretty cool. Uh, I remember watching a few of those teasers on Instagram and I thought it's looking pretty cool. Uh, this one was you know, sort of six to seven hundred for quite a while off of those kind of, you know, rumors for the show that's going to be coming out. Now it's over a thousand. Uh, maybe a little bit under a thousand if you can swing a Sandman number one. I think we'll probably be a decent buy. And I do have a good feeling about the show. Like, you know, if it's a really popular show, maybe there's another leg to this one. It is a pretty great, uh, uh, I think it's late 80s. I think it's a 1989 comic. But uh, Sandman number one, 1,111. Maybe aim a little closer to 1,000 if uh, you want to be a little strategic on that one. Next one was a really great price, I think, for a book that I kind of want. I was having my eye on this one for sure. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one in a newsstand edition. So the newsstand edition of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one selling for $1,175. That's not too bad. Uh, I I'd saw a, a direct edition 
of, of this one. It, it sold for about $800, but a month or two ago, there was a direct edition that sold for about $1,100. And I was thinking, oh, like maybe this one will heat back up, but then that one sold for $800 in a direct edition. So a newsstand edition, this is a late 80s book too. The newsstands are, are pretty tough. I think that's a great price, $1,175 for the newsstand edition. Yeah, kind of hitting myself that you know, maybe I, I didn't get it because this is I'm on the record as wanting this one in either a direct or a newsstand. I got one signed, but um, I would like to have another one of, of this one. I do, you know, really like this one. First appearance of uh, Bebop and Rocksteady and Krang, but then it's pretty much the first appearance of like the four colored bandana Ninja Turtles. Before that, they had all red bandanas. So for me, that's like a big first appearance. And I always knew the Ninja Turtles as having the four colors. So, you know, as a kid, I didn't even know they had the red before that. So. I think uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one. New stand edition, $1,175 is, is a price to aim for. Okay, and the last one, just a huge key issue. I was uh, really interested to see what it would end at. A Tomb of Dracula number 10, first appearance of Blade in a 9.8 white page. It's looking pretty awesomely centered and just super fresh too. Sold for $39,555. So big first appearance. This is a tough one in a 9.8, a 1970s book. I'd... Didn't really have much of an idea. This is not one I really follow. These books being pretty much out of my price range, but saw this one in this batch, 39,555. I believe there was an Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of Punisher. It was a 9.8 off white to white pages. I think that one went closer to 30,000. So this Blade book, it was in a white page though, the other one was off white to white, is going for more than Amazing Spider-Man 129 in a 9.8. That's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll see how Blade, uh, you know, this this Blade book goes moving forward. But pretty cool to just see one go for so expensive, thirty nine thousand five hundred fifty five for a perfect Tomb of Dracula, number ten. Okay, so uh, yeah, just a, a, a nice list there. And I think um, you know you got s certain books like the Symbiote books kind of cooling down, and you know even a couple like that Marvel preview book, First Star Lord. I feel like that probably should have went for way more, but uh, 2250 I think, is a phenomenal deal. So, you know, I think if you pick away at some of the books that are kind of cooling down a little bit, there's really some opportunities out there in the 9.8 market right now, but certainly there's always the hot books out there, and I think, you know, you want to be pretty careful that you're not just, you know, following the rumors and buying the hot ones and overpaying, and then, you know, eventually they cool down. So, uh, but yeah, on some of these big key issues that are kind of cold, there's no real rumors about them. I think there's some opportunities out there. And, and then as well, if you're a big Symbiote fan, keep an eye on the Symbiote books in the next few months here. If they kind of lull down even a little bit more, I think, you know, now's the kind of time, it's getting to that time that you can start to buy uh, some of the, the Symbiote key issues as well as they kind of cool down from the, uh, the Venom 2 movie. Hopefully that happens a little bit more uh, in the next few months here. All right, team. Thanks so much for watching, though. Um, give me a like if you haven't already, and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be uh, much appreciated. But uh, thanks so much for watching, as always. I'll see you on the next one.